Yeah, yeah, so just on video. Oh. All right. So, so Mandy Carter is here from Durham, North Carolina. Yes. So, Mandy, you work with the National Black Justice, Justice Coalition, Coalition and also with Southerners on New Ground. Southerners new, on New Ground. So, what is it? Why did you come to Selma, bringing those kind of connections? Those connections. Actually, this is interesting. Um, I was 15 when the 63 March on Washington happened. Didn't know about Bayard Rustin until I met the Quakers and their friends. And somehow I've had this obsession about who he is. I never met him. But someone who's black, gay, uh, was a civil rights organizer forever. I kind of modeled myself after that. And I wasn't at the march in 1963, but I was there in 2013. I was 17 when this thing happened. I was living in Schenectady, New York. I'd never heard what was going on. So to have that happen in 2013, along with the president being there, I said, this is for my opportunity to be here in Selma. And because African-American, woman, southerner, lesbian, connections have always been there. And the intentionality of song when we started that evening was like in 1993. We're now in our, what, 23rd year. And we also uh, co-founded NBJC for the same reason, don't want to organize it, so need to fill it. So I'm down here wearing my two hats, but yet I'm also embodying our whole generation. So there's a ton of us in the 60s movement. And it was an amazing to sit in the rain on the steps of the Lincoln Memorial in 2013, and I thought, I have got to be here. Uh, so that's part of it, but also we have students. I mean, that's part of the demographic and what the changes. So I'm just humbled. And to see Obama introduced by John Lewis yesterday, Un unbelievable. And so we saw that, and I'm like, we're going to walk across this bridge today. Wow, so there's a lot of emotion for you in the uh, sense of like kind of thinking back to your youth and then bringing it forward to yes, today. Yes, absolutely. And I have to say, there's probably four people that have really been instrumental. It have to be Guy and Candy Carolyn. We had an AFSC high school work camp uh, in junior, I was a junior in high school in Mount Pleasant, and they had an AFSC high school work camp, and they brought up people from the South, including, I had never heard of Guy and Candy Carolyn. They came as young folk singers and said, this is what we're doing. We're at the Highlander Center. We're down south recording freedom songs, freedom meetings in the churches, as that's their contribution. They're still at the Highlander Center today, to this day. And then they're the ones who told me that a young Joan Baez, who's just starting her, not folk singing, but activism, well, you need to go to Carmel Valley and talk to Joan Baez and Ira Sandro, and I got to go in 1968. So this has just been like this amazing, I mean, what? You know, I mean, it's not just me, it's a generation. And here we are. And then you, and the kids, when I look at these little kids that are here and, 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 and the, and the uh, elders, and I'm thinking, what a moment, what a moment, yeah. So this is powerful. And demographics, you know, it's all changing. So I'm, I'm humbled and honored. Yeah. So you mentioned Bayard Rustin. When did you first learn about his, him, and what what did you learn at that time, and then and then bring it forward to to the work you've done in his in his legacy exactly. more recently? Good. I hadn't heard about Bayard until I was at the AFSC, AFSC High School work camp. It was Guy and Candy Kerman said, "Oh, you need to know about this gentleman called Bayard Rustin." And by the way, when you hear about the March on Washington, all due respect, it's always about King's dynamic speech. They didn't talk about Bayard and April Randolph, and when they said he was black, he was also, uh, uh, didn't know his father, I was, I was, an, I was orphaned, and I said, I, I said, I, I need, and, and he was in the same world, AFSC, Quakers, War Resistance League that I became a member of, and a staff member of, so I felt like it was this incredible journey, and we have been trying ever since 1983 to find a way to honor Bayard, and on the, thir the 50th anniversary of 2013, not only did he get the Congressional Medal of Honor, I mean the Presidential Medal of Freedom, by Obama, to Walter Nagel, his surviving partner. But the legacy he's had, and he was here, he's had like, what, a 60-year career, and as someone who's, again, black, gay, identify with, and just, but it's not just him. I mean, it's just like what he embodies. Right. Um, so that's been a person. I never met the gentleman. I don't know how that's possible. Never met him. But it was that. But also, it's, you know, it's like the Audrey Lords and all the other black LGBT people. So that's part of it. And so what do you think that that legacy, that, that legacy of, I don't know if you would call it intersectionality yeah, or how you would find it, what does that mean for the movement that's happening now in terms of what we think of, of today, but also what, what the organizing yeah. issues today? I, you know, I thought it was interesting because um, I was also thinking the other tenant that I thought I had said at Warren Wilson, there seems to be the tenant of college campuses have always been front and center of any social justice movement, whatever, um, but also the faith community. And because the Quakers have this strong tradition, as does Unitarians, I was intrigued by the civil rights movement, and then you got the United Farm Worker movement. But here we are sitting here with this
black brown unity around their struggle, the commonality of our struggle. Um, intersectional too, though, in the way that it's got to be class, race, culture, that laundry list, ability, and you realize that you don't talk about it in that really intersectional way. We do silo organizing, I only do this, I only do that. But I'm walking around like that all the time, like this person. But our movements have to be more about that, and not just in English, by the way. So I think that's the future of where we go. And so for you living where you live in Durham, North Carolina, are there any um, ways that that expresses itself, particularly in terms of the issues that are facing that community yeah. in Durham? I was just saying, when, when, when the growing Latina, Latino community started living in Durham, it was kind of like this. What are those people doing in our black neighborhood? Mm. But what was so amazing is that the Immaculate uh, Conception Church, of not far from where I live, that was the first church in Durham said, we're going to start doing services in Spanish and English. What a welcoming combination. But they have like a black uh, minister's alliance in Durham, and because they have that personal relationship, it was Immaculata, a Catholic, Catholic church, the black uh, minister of alliance, they said, we don't have to be getting into a black ground split. We need to talk about how to do unity. So it's things in English, but they're organizing living wage campaign, um, Spanish in terms of like things and whatnot. They started centers there, El Centro Hispano. Right. And it was only because people said, we're going to relate, and they have like a credit union now because of the cell phone credit union. It was, here's the people are intentional. It was intentionally being intersectional, um, and if you're intentional about it, then you figure out how does that look. Food, transportation, uh, communication, and now love happens. Now you have a Latino community. You now got children, and, you know, whatever. And, uh, but it's good. Solid issue for Durham. It's not Durham, Durham City. It's real, real doable. Yeah. And you can see it. And Song has been at the table every single time. The second one, if we have enough tape, the Mount Olive uh, Pickle Company um, was had this horrible work conditions out in Mount Olive where they did the uh, cucumbers. And they did a call. They said, who in North Carolina would like to join us to find a way to get a union in Mount Olive? The first book we set off the song, I was sitting at that meeting, I was at the table. It took five years to get that union they did. But we walked in solidarity from Mount Olive to the state capitol, put on pressure on the General Assembly. And the Aha moment for me, they had a town meeting all in Spanish. And for the first time in my life, we had to put the on and hear some of But that was like an Aha moment. So like that, it's just getting stronger.